This is my house. We inherited it from a group of girls who named it the Friend Zone. Apparently in the past, a lot of guys have gotten denied while sitting on that porch swing. Although it's a big house, it was built in what we're guessing was the 1950s and certainly functions like it, meaning that we pay way more rent than we should. Aside from the occasional house concert by the neighbors on our left, our street is pretty quiet and we like it that way. As you can see, it's a pretty charming place. That is until you find out that there are two bathrooms, one stove, and 12 people living inside. The front hallway is my least favorite part of the place, mainly because everyone thinks it's okay to store their crap there. Currently, the decor consists of 12 bottles of laundry detergent, an umbrella, and some old medical bills. Our laundry closet makes its home in the center of the entryway. With 12 people, doing laundry is all about timing, mainly because you can't open the door to the laundry room without barricading everyone else in the house. The only good part about the front hallway is that it connects to the family room. This is Maggie. Everyone would think that living with girls would be very clean, but no, these girls are gross. At the beginning of the year, or two years ago, they wanted to call our house Little Dingy. Like, if that gives you any idea as to what was to come, they are gross. Like, they just, like, not only are their, like, living habits kind of gross, like, they just don't really clean a lot, like, sanitary-wise. They're like, oh, it looks nice, therefore, therefore it's clean. I'm like, it doesn't even look nice. The family room is the center of the friend zone. It sits off the kitchen, so you can never escape the sound of clanging dishes or the constant, unrelenting blender. It's also the one place in the house that is guaranteed to always have people in it. Literally, what is happening? I don't know! Hi, Ellen! Okay, so I live in this room right on the other side of this wall. Um, it might look like it's solid concrete, but let me tell you, basically tissue paper. When people are in this living room, I can close my eyes and it's like they're sitting in my bedroom with me. So that means, one, I don't get to fall asleep until everyone is cleared out of here. And two, I have to wake up as soon as the first person wakes up and decides to come into the living room. Even if that's a Saturday morning and someone wants to have a friends marathon, that means I also get to have a friends marathon in my room. It's awesome. Bree and Lauren live in a room off the front hallway. They converted it from a single to a double so we could fit in our 12th. They are neighbored by two vacuums, one traffic cone, and the infamously loud family room. So, over Christmas break again, I saw some suspicious activity happening in the living room, I'm in the kitchen when I was sitting in the living room. And I just saw like something like across the across the floor, and then I moved out of the house to live in another house. And I got a text. was still in the group message, and I got a text saying, "There's a mouse eating all of our food," and a picture of Lindsay's bread that was half eaten. And I thought to myself, "Huh, I think I saw that mouse about two months ago." <laughs> and so I didn't tell anyone that I saw the mouse two months ago. People got kind of mad, but we got rid of it. <laughs> Between the 12 of us, we share four stovetop burners, two fridges, and one dishwasher. That being said, the kitchen is the dirtiest, most crowded place in the whole house, which makes it perfect for fun and horrible for cooking. My personal experience with the kitchen is that it is the source of great joy and great frustration. Uh, when it's clean and people are doing their chores, myself included, um, it can be a great place to hang out in and a great place to cook and eat together or just sit together at the kitchen table. But when it's dirty, I want to cry and run away and get very bitter and don't want to do dishes even if it's my job because 
it's just not fun to put away a sink full of dishes and empty the dishwasher once a day when you have dishes as your chore. So yeah, that's my relationship with the kitchen. I love it and I hate it. There have been times where I'll like do a super thorough clean of the kitchen like early in the day. By the end of the day, the kitchen is just in total shambles and there is dried food all over the stove and the sink is full and there's gross food everywhere and there's splatters all over the countertops. It's just incredible how quickly it um, demises into total chaos. Thinking about the fridge gets me really upset. You have no idea how much stress it causes me. I open up the fridge every single day and it's just like, bang, crack, bang. It's just like, oh, it's like jam falls. Helen's stupid whatever thing that she bought that she forgot about falls. It's just like, people are savages when it comes to the fridge. They put things in the fridge and just like the living room, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like there are things that sit in the fridge that just rot. And people then, people get still stay like incredibly possessive over their rotten food. It's like one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of. Like, you throw away my moldy, rotten, smelly brown salmon? How dare you? I'm like, holy crap, I'm not gonna pay you for it. I'm like just trying to help everybody out by getting rid of that horrible stench that is like now seeping up into the front door. And every time I walk in, I'm met with it. You know, I just like, the fridge drives me absolutely insane. Like, people just put stack their food in another thing that gets me is they put their heavy stuff on top of my soft stuff like I just prefer my own personal space when it comes to the fridge one because I cook a lot and I cook good food and I have nice ingredients and like I will like sometimes open up the fridge and like I have everything like nicely stacked and very contained and I'll find like oh milk on top of my spinach there's one person in particular who has been moving their food down like to the downstairs fridge like She's like, it's like slowly but surely she's moving her food. And I'm like, I know what you're doing. At first I just brought like one thing down at a time, like things that I needed in the morning or like just a nice jar of salsa. Um, but then now everything's pretty much down there. Yeah, my fridge is empty upstairs. It's totally empty. Um, and <laughs> I think that, um, someone is beginning to notice that it's empty because Maggie keeps talking about how the full, the fridge downstairs got so full and she doesn't understand why all of a sudden we have so much more food. Um, but as of right now, she doesn't know that it's me. I don't know if she knows that I know, but I definitely know and I just keep seeing all this food that I know is not one of the downstairs people's and I am, I'm done. Helen and Catherine live in additions off the kitchen. Okay, this is my room. Here we are. I love it. It's like my own little nook and fanny. This is where I sleep. Right here with brown bear. I like kind of cleaned a little bit before you guys got here. And it, clearly didn't really do anything. I've noticed that I go to sleep when the last person leaves the kitchen and I wake up when the first person enters the kitchen the next morning or basically whenever Maggie opens her door and starts her day or is in the kitchen or is coming in from studying or if she just walks around or if she just enters the house and I literally just go like this. <laughs> and I'm like, uh I just hear her. I think it's like a sixth sense. I'm like, oh, obviously, it's like, Maggie's home. <laughs> like, I just know, because she's just like, just like has a way of walking. Like, I, I don't know if she walks loudly, but I think she just like, just her presence. I'm like, Maggie, Maggie's here. <laughs> Wait, you don't understand how bad this is. I mean, it's really bad. I have my... This is it. <laughs> For my space, like, I feel like my room's constantly messy because there is no place to put anything at all in my closets in my room. But something that it does go maybe I'll there. miss later on in life. Despite all of the craziness in this place, we've made it two years. And in two weeks, we move out. Um, 
When I first moved into this house, I was 100% an introvert and wanted my alone time, wanted, I had my own room, which was awesome, but like felt like even when I like woke up in the morning or came home from a bad day, I like didn't want to talk to anyone. I just like wanted to go to my room and like got frustrated. People tried to talk to me and felt like overwhelmed by how many people were always in the house when I came home but like have since learned to know how to be welcomed when I walk into a house and how to deal with people welcoming me all the time and to love that instead of get annoyed by it or get frustrated or get even more angry or tired about, around be, about being around people have learned to just love that about this house instead of like get annoyed by it which I think has been interesting because I never thought that I would be that way. I am just really gonna miss this place. This is the first place in Charlottesville that really felt like home for me. Um, and just a lot happened this year in this house and um, I'm just really gonna miss it. I think the inside of the house to a certain extent is kind of similar. I think it's still a house of 12 girls so it's bound to be messy and dirty and disheveled. Oh. Um, but I think oh. The layout of the house is so communal that the fact that it's messy and dirty is a good thing because it means that we are all living in a shared space and enjoying that space together and I think it would be weird and different to come home to a house that was pristine and totally clean because I think that means that we'd be spending all of our time elsewhere and like in our rooms or um, just like out of the library, out on grounds all day. I think it means a lot to come home to a house that's well worn because I think it means people love living here and love being in this shared space. And that I was just thinking I would take like a house that is dirty and like a little bit run down over a house that's neat and clean because I think in our house it means that people have loved this place and like lived in it really well um, because it's just a great place to live. Thank you.